And good evening, everyone. My name is Francis Strasitz, and I'm a meteorologist and weather observer up here. Coming to you live from the summit of Mount Washington, and I have a very special guest with me today. Uh, Patrick, if you want to just briefly introduce yourself and talk just a little bit about your work, um, then we can start the, the whole forecast process uh, here today. Yeah, sounds good. Hey, hey, Francis, and hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. My name is Patrick Scanlon. I'm an avalanche forecaster and snow ranger at the U.S. Forest Service, Mount Washington Avalanche Center. Um, and I'm really excited to be joining today. This is a new format for us. And um, yeah, excited to jump into it with you, Francis. Great. Yeah, so we're going to kind of divide and conquer this broadcast. I'll start with more of the meteorological background of what we expect the weekend, and then Patrick will sort of dive into more of the avalanche forecast for this upcoming event. So yeah, with that being said, I think a good place to start, as always, is taking a look at current conditions. And so here I have our website pulled up. Find it anytime, mountwashington.org slash current conditions. And so I want to talk a little bit about how the day has changed. Of course, we started this morning off my first observation where we're at 14 degrees below zero. Since then, we've finally warmed up above zero. It took all the way to 5 p.m. today. We were finally at about the two degree mark on the summit up here. And winds, those are another story over the last 24 hours or so. Currently sitting at just below tropical storm force at 39 miles per hour. Um, but they were much, much stronger this time of yesterday. Uh, they got all the way up to about 117 or so miles per hour uh, last night. And visibility today as well uh, has increased from about an eighth of a mile all the way up to about 130 miles or our maximum visibility from up here on the summit. We'll take a quick look outside um, on our deck cam. And again, you'll notice a lot of wind-blown, scoured out snowfall that's occurred up here on the summit. We're going to take a look across the valley from our wildcat cam. You can see there are a lot of a lot of snowfall, of course, no surprise. We've seen about six inches of snow or so the last day. Um, so I want to take now a, a little bit of a zoomed out look from Mount Washington. We'll take a look at visible satellites. This is going to be important for setting the stage for our weekend storm system. You'll see the sun is starting to set across the eastern portion of the United States. You'll notice here this little area of swirling clouds there. And some cloudiness, of course, across the northern tier of the country as well. These are two pieces of energy. One is a surface low pressure. The other is the low pressure up about the middle atmosphere or so. And these are going to sort of join forces uh, somewhere around the mid-Atlantic, and they're going to spread a lot of moisture, heavy snowfall, icing, all kinds of different precipitation across uh, essentially all of New England. We'll take a look at the uh, upper level water vapor here. Okay, find that. And you can see this piece of energy. It's drying down some uh, dry air behind it and lots of moisture ahead of it. And really what's going to make this weekend storm system so special is just the amount of moisture that's associated with it. We're talking almost summer-like levels of moisture streaming northward into a very cold air mass. As I said, right now in Mount Washington, we're around 2 degrees. So we have plenty of cold air in place, especially across the northern part of New England. Um, and so we'll get into the forecast details now. We'll take a look at forecast and precipitation types. So I'll step on over to the side here so we can all see this hopefully. Uh, and so we'll advance the clock. Again, right now we're under high pressure. We've got a little bit of a breather before the system comes in, thankfully. Um, you can see some areas of blue starting to fill in. This is around dinner time or so in the next couple of hours. We'll see some snow streaming from that northern disturbance. That'll make its way into the region. Uh, and the snowfall could start, uh, yeah, moderate to heavy uh, as soon as it begins. And that's because there's going to be a lot of warm air moving up from the south. It's going to cause a lot of vertical motion and precipitation. So we'll see some of these darker blues start to work their way north. Mount Washington's right there, by the way. And as that um, storm system begins to get its act together well to the south, we'll see areas of moderate to heavy snowfall continue well into Saturday morning. Notice, too, this mixing line is going to start making its way to the north as well. And so we'll advance the clock forward. This is now around noon or so, uh, Saturday. That mixing line is near Laconia. In areas further south, we're seeing plain freezing rain, and even rainfall uh, near the coastal plain of New England, southern New England, but up here in the White Mountains region, lots and lots of heavy snow throughout the day tomorrow. And we'll see that continue. That mixing line will touch the southern summits. We think perhaps the southern slopes of the White Mountains may mix with or even change with freezing rain and sleep for a period of time. That could dampen the totals a little bit down uh, that neck of the woods, but still, a robust to heavy snowfall event uh, is likely for Mount Washington, at least the northern presidentials. And then we'll see another round of heavy snowfall. This is because cold air is going to be rushing in from the northwest and again, uh, causing more lift. Uh, so 
Essentially, that lift will increase precipitation rate, so we could see another few hours uh, early Saturday night of one to as many as much as three inches or so of snowfall per hour. Um, again, going Saturday night. And then the system is essentially out of here by uh, midnight Saturday night. Uh, it pulls away. There could be some upslope snow showers as well in the higher terrain. Uh, but the big story behind this is will be some stronger winds from the northwest that'll tend to blow snow around, and get things moving up here in the higher terrain. And then Sunday is not going to be a half bad day. We'll have high pressure building in and a warming trend as well. So we'll take a look now quickly at uh, temperatures and how they're going to unfold this, this event. Excuse me. <clears throat> and so again, we'll advance the clock here into Friday or overnight tonight, and then we'll see that rain snow line, that zero degree line, gradually making its way northward overnight. It's not really going to stop too too much. Uh, so by uh, later on overnight, we'll see it near the. Uh, uh, New Hampshire, uh, Massachusetts border, then eventually it'll continue to make its way northward, uh, just south of the Lakes region by the morning. And so while it may be above freezing at about uh, 5,000 feet or so, the surface is going to be plenty cold from freezing rain in southern portions of New Hampshire. Uh, and that freezing line, again, is going to make its way ever so close to the White Mountains region. So we'll be right on the line. And again, southern areas will be favored for uh, potential mix or changeover to sleet and freezing rain. And then we will see that uh, freezing line crash back to the south later Saturday with that cold front behind the system, ushering in much colder air. Have your snowfall briefly as that does happen again. Um, then moving into Sunday, a cooler day, but again, uh, close to if not exceeding uh, average conditions. And finally, we'll look at winds. Uh, so those will be a big part of the story. So right now we're seeing decreasing northwesterly winds, uh, but these winds will be on the increase as we make our way through the overnight hours here on Friday. So again, we'll see our winds become more westerly, right? And then more southwesterly as the night goes on. And that's in response to that moisture sort of surging northward. Uh, so by uh, midnight tonight, we'll have a fully a southwesterly wind. We can see this area of red um, colors here. And that indicates winds above tropical storm force. And those winds will make their way northward Saturday uh, or, or midnight tonight into early Saturday. And really see those winds start to crank tomorrow morning as I start my observations again. Uh, snow will be blowing around. We'll have a really strong wind from the south. So again, we expect the highest snowfall totals on south-facing slopes for upslope potential to be maximized. Uh, but hurricane force winds are definitely not out of the question with the spent as we work our way into Saturday. The likely peak sometime middle afternoon Saturday. And we'll have a little bit of a lull in the afternoon as the low center passes nearby. That'll reduce the pressure gradients. Uh, but then as soon as the low moves over to the east, we'll see northwesterly winds increase pretty dramatically. Uh, by uh, Saturday night into Sunday, we're expecting gusts all the way up to about 85 miles per hour or so uh, as the storm system pulls away. Here's what the National Weather Service is thinking in terms of snowfall totals. Uh, no surprises here, a big and widespread snowfall event. For many of us in the North Country, this is our biggest snowfall of the year, single event so far. Uh, you can see the bullseye right here over the White Mountains region. They're thinking between 18 and 24 inches possible. Uh, with this storm system. And so uh, I want to turn things over now to uh, Patrick here. Um, and I want him to, if you have any insights as to the avalanche risk uh, with this event, Patrick, I'd love to hear about it. Sounds good, Francis. Thanks so much. Can you see my screen? I can, yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, so that was a really nice setup for uh, just a couple of slides that I have for everybody. Um, as Francis alluded to, we've had quite an active period of avalanche activity in the presidentials over the past uh, week and a half, two weeks. And we really expect this trend to continue through the weekend and actually be um, quite elevated in terms of avalanche hazard this weekend. Um, here's just a, if anybody wants to reach out to us uh, with any questions, feel free to um, send us an email, pat at mountwashingtonavalanchecenter.org or snow at mountwashingtonavalanchecenter.org, just before I forget. So how do we get here? How do we get to a point where um, we've issued an avalanche watch for the weekend as we roll into the weekend? We expect to have um, an avalanche warning issued tomorrow. We expect to be at high avalanche danger tomorrow and probably on Sunday. How did we get here? It feels like just a couple weeks ago, um, the ravine and, and a lot of the high terrain looked like this photo of, of the lip on Tuckerman Ravine with lots of exposed rocks and ice looking very much like a sort of typical May condition, um, late April or May condition. And I've pulled a very a kind of rudimentary um, height of snow, historical height of snow graph here 
Um, you can see the end of the yellow line is March 19th. So this is a couple days old. Um, and this is just after we've had a couple days of snow starting. But you can see just before that, we are well, well below um, our seasonal snowpack average, which is the blue line. And, um, you know, this is uh, quite shocking, actually, in terms of just where our snowpack was, how developed the avalanche paths were across our terrain. And, um, and it's really interesting to see how much this has changed in just a, a week and a half or so. So why did this change? Like, well, I'll show you some, some updated pictures in, uh, in just a second. But we've had roughly 30 inches of snow um, recorded uh, accumulating in the past seven days in the area, and even more if you look beyond that time frame. And not only did we have 30 inches of snow, which is quite significant, but we've had winds um, that have allowed, to, <clears throat> allowed the snow to move and get transported um, from one side of the mountain to the other side of the mountain. And, and generally, these have been um, dominantly west westerly winds. So a lot of the snow that's been um, at, the, at the tops of the ridges and on the western slopes have been picked up and moved um, onto the eastern slopes. And we had these conditions happening for multiple days in a row. And so I know this graph is probably pretty small on your devices right now, but this can be found uh, on our website as well. It's our um, it's our uh, snowpack tracker. And we use data from the OBS um, to populate this, but this is a nice way for us to visualize how the weather inputs are, are sort of affecting our snowpack. And you know, you, um, it, this is current up until um, weather data from yesterday and the hazard rating from today. But you can see on the top graph sort of our, our snow accumulations and our water equivalents. And then in the middle graph, you can see wind um, with on the yellow bars is the average. And um, then on the very bottom, I'll just point out our avalanche hazards. And you can, it might be small to see the letters, but you can identify those by color. So red are days that are rated high, orange are days that are rated considerable, uh, yellow are days that are rated moderate, and green are days that are rated low. And so you can see we went through this sort of kind of low period for quite a while through the beginning of March. And then when mid-March came and we started to get some significant storms, this danger jumped up and it's been quite consistent uh, through the past uh, 10, 14 days. And I've circled three areas um, around these, these uh, danger ratings where we've had significant natural avalanche cycles. So we've seen big avalanches that are happening um, naturally without the need for a human to step on an area of snow and trigger the avalanche. And so let me highlight some of those for you. So this is one that we believe happened around uh, Tuesday, the 19th-ish. It's hard to know exactly when these things happen. Um, into the, if you look straight ahead into the fog here, this is, uh, you'd be looking at the headwall of Tuckerman Ravine, sort of the iconic view that you get of Tucks. And this, what's crazy about this picture is the photographer is standing um, on or just uphill from our re avalanche rescue cache, which is an area where often our forecast team goes to and we say, oh, you know, we're, we're not quite an avalanche terrain yet. And guess what? This last event really proved uh, that to be, it sort of was a, a nice reminder that um, Avalanches, given the right conditions, can run really far, be really destructive, um, and catch us off guard. Um, these are things that that are just so dynamic and changing all the time. And this was a scary one for sure. The avalanche debris here, which is what this person is walking on, is over three meters deep. And so, you know, when we talk about the destructive capability of something like this, this this would have destroyed a house. Um, this would have this was snapping trees that were in the in the path here. Um, this would have this could have buried multiple people, um, and and arguably this type of avalanche is probably unsurvivable if you were to be buried in it. And so as we move into the weekend, I, I think I really want to stress um, that we're not really out of the woods here yet. We saw this massive avalanche a couple days ago, but we've continued to see other avalanche activity. And we expect, um, for a couple different reasons, this to sort of continue as we as we move into the weekend. So this picture on the left is from today. Um, 
looking at some of the weak layers that are buried underneath uh, a lot of new snow. So I'm actually finding these uh, grapple or ball bearing type snow buried almost a meter down, about three feet down from the surface. And um, this acts as a weak layer and it's likely um, what's been causing some of our, these really, really big avalanches that we've been seeing. Um, here's another one in Hillman's Highway. And in a lot of areas, um, this still exists. So what, what's about to happen with this storm is we're about to get a bunch of new snow as you outlined, Francis, and it's gonna fall on top of a um, snowpack that's already dangerous. And this is um, both exciting and very scary to us as we think about um, the, how busy our weekends can get. So let's just jump ahead into um, this. I'm sort of repeating what you've, you've already outlined, Francis, but we, you know, we're, we're about to expect, this is a probabilistic model on the left, the, the national blend of models. And you know, clearly we're looking at potentially, certainly a foot of snow and potentially significantly more than that. Um, and so it's without a doubt, we're going to see big impacts from this storm from an avalanche point of view, um, especially as we have winds that are just like how I talked about earlier, these perfect wind speeds, you know, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour on Mount Washington are really, really good at transporting snow and creating really dangerous avalanche conditions. And so we're expecting to see this all the way through the storm on Saturday and then shifting direction and increasing again on Sunday, um, keeping those, uh, those uh, dangerous conditions elevated through the weekend. So I think if I can impart, and I'm sure we can, we can open this up to some discussion too, and maybe there's some questions if we have time, but you know, if I could uh, impart a few key takeaways for, for this weekend, um, I, I would say that it is not going to be possible to safely travel in or around avalanche terrain this weekend. We expect avalanches to be very large in size, very destructive, and um, and it's it's not really not something to mess around with or go poke to see what the conditions are looking like in Tuckerman this weekend. Um, I think giving the, the terrain a really wide margin um, as you're moving around in the mountains is is very very important this weekend, and I think I think I just touched on this. Uh, you know, spontaneous, destructive, large avalanches to be expected. And um, as we just saw with the Tuckerman Ravine avalanche a couple of days ago, these things can still travel farther down into runout zones that have happened in years. Um, that, that really is a kind of a historic avalanche that we saw. And so uh, I can't stress enough how, um, how dangerous conditions are really looking for this Saturday and Sunday. Excellent. Um, thank you for sharing that wealth of information. And thank you for taking the time to speak with me and the viewers of the observatory as well. Um, so yeah, I had a couple of thoughts and questions. My first thought is maybe a silly one, but I can totally relate to just the feeling of both excitement and sort of dread with these types of big events. Uh, of course, you know, this is quite a dangerous event with the avalanche risk, but also meteorologically, just pretty cool seeing the amount of moisture and snowfall uh, that we're going to receive this weekend, of course, there's always sort of that interplay as a scientist, but my question would be for you, just uh, simply for the viewers out there, what would you say the most critical time of avalanche danger would be, say, this weekend? I know Sunday is a clearer day with calmer conditions, and I know some people might be tempted to come out with this rain, but really, what would be like the no-go time in terms of you know, visiting the whites to do some backcountry skiing or snowboarding? Yeah, so specifically for avalanche train, I think the no-go time is really, you know, through like from tonight as snow starting, and keep in mind, you know, we're not going from a low hazard to a high hazard. We're already at a considerable hazard rating. Um, and so we're jumping up uh, for tomorrow, given the snow. But um, I would say all day tomorrow, Saturday, and also all day Sunday, even though that snow is stopping, um, what we expect to see is those winds shift and, and become from the northwest. And those northwest winds for us, that's like, that's our bread and butter. That's the, we, we are able to build huge w reactive wind slabs here with um, with that type of wind. It's uh, just based on how the terrain is configured. configured. It's really effective at loading um, snow from northwesterly aspects and westerly aspects into some of the terrain that's the most popular for skiing. Uh, that includes Tuckerman Ravine, Gulf of Slides, sometimes Huntington Ravine. Um, and so, yeah, if I, I actually, 
uh, to your point, I, I don't think I can, I don't think I can identify a good time this weekend or a safe time this weekend to, to be out skiing in avalanche terrain. Um, I think staying on the Sherburn ski trail will be a great option. Um, you know, check out some of the glades around Wildcat might even be, have some good skiing um, this weekend as well. So hopefully that uh, answers your question, Francis. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you might be still sharing your screen. Do um, you want to maybe stop the screen share? But maybe it's on my end. Yeah. Oh, there. Cool. Awesome. So we can both see each other. Cool. Um, but yeah, any final thoughts for the weekend's threat or I guess, you know, the rest of the season in terms of hazards going forward? I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot there. but <laughs> No, absolutely. I think um, I, I like to remind people that avalanche conditions and mountain hazard conditions are dynamic and they change every single day. And, um, you know, just because you had a really good weekend skiing last April and you maybe planned that same April weekend for this year, um, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to find the same conditions. Uh, we can have wintry conditions in May. We can have spring conditions in February. And we see that routinely. And I think the biggest thing is, is, to, um, is to make sure you're, you're using resources that help you make your own decisions and assess your own risks. Uh, as you're traveling in the mountains. And so the OBS is a, obviously a great resource for the higher summits forecast. Um, the Mount Washington Avalanche Center website, mountwashingtonavalanchecenter.org is where you can check our uh, up-to-date uh, up forecast and, and get uh, avalanche information. And um, yeah, I think that's what I would say is just keep your head on a swivel and uh, don't expect, um, you know, just because it's spring in the valley, doesn't mean it's spring uh, on Mount Washington. Absolutely. Thank you for those awesome uh, parting thoughts there. I'm just going to quickly wrap up here with just a brief summary of our higher summits forecast as we start to wind things down. But again, thank you so much for your time. I know you're all busy even today. Uh, surveying the slopes is just incredible work you guys do over there at the Avalanche Center. I definitely want to come over and visit at some point. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome anytime. And um, thanks so much for having me. We we use the ops. Bob's products every morning, every day. So um, it's really cool to, to be able to do this. Thanks, Francis. Absolutely. Yeah. So just want to highlight briefly, it's actually going to mention the Mount Washington Avalanche Center.org. That's actually linked in our higher summits forecast today, just because of the severity of the avalanche risk coming up over the weekend. Uh, but I want to kind of briefly break things down day by day. Uh, so we'll start with tonight. So right now, of course, we're in the clear, but we'll trend back into the clouds. And eventually snowfall will break out later on in the evening. And we're expecting about one to three inches or so throughout the overnight. Uh, temperatures will start in the lower single digits and then rise into lower teens or so, and winds will be from the west to the southwest, 30 to 35 to 50 miles per hour at first, increasing to 40 to 60, thus up to 75 miles per hour late. So that's gonna get things going on the slopes here. Wind chills will rise to between 10 and 20 below zero. Uh, Saturday, we'll see uh, plenty of clouds and obviously a lot of snowfall. Uh, we upped our snow totals so this morning. We were thinking more in the way of 8 to 12, but now we've upped it to about 10 to 15 or so throughout the day. That could increase as well. We'll keep a very close eye on it. Uh, temperatures will rise into the lower 20s. Winds will be from the southwest, 45 to 60 miles per hour, with gusts up to 75 miles per hour early. They'll decrease to 25 to 40 later in the day. The wind chills will be on the rise as well, 10 to 20 below to between 5 below and 5 above later on. So definitely not warm by any stretch, but a little bit warmer than it has been. Uh, for Saturday night, we'll be in the clouds, trending towards clearing. On our probably cloudy skies late, again, that storm's going to be quick to exit, and we'll see snow heavy at times early, uh, so near dinner time or so. That'll gradually taper to snow showers, but a quick three to six inches or so additionally overnight, tomorrow night, not out of the question. Uh, temperatures will fall to around 10 degrees, and winds will be from the southwest, shift rapidly clockwise to the northwest at 25 to 40 miles per hour, quickly increasing to 50 to 70, with gusts up to 80 miles per hour late and wind chills will fall accordingly, 15 to 25 below zero. And finally, for Sunday, the nice day out of the weekend will be mostly in the clear, on our partly cloudy skies. Uh, high temperatures will rise back up to the mid-teens. Winds will be pretty busy early in the day, 45 to 60 with gusts up to hurricane force, uh, 75 miles per hour early, and then decreasing to between 35 and 50 and switching to the north as well. Um, the wind chills will start between 15 and 25 below and gradually rise to between five and 10 degrees below zero late. And on that note, I want to wish everyone a happy and safe weekend with this upcoming winter storm for the North Country. Again, you can check out our forecast anytime, mountwashington.org slash forecast. You can always go over to the Mount Washington Avalanche Center um, for their latest forecast as well. And thank you again, Patrick, and everyone who is uh, viewing the video. We're going to wrap things up here. But again, uh, have a great weekend, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank you.